Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. And welcome back to the Elm Hill City Zoo. In this episode, we will finally add our first cat to the wildcat house. And the cat that we'll add today is the snow leopard. So this is so exciting. So many of you guys waited so long for me to start building those habitats for the cats. So finally, it is there, our first episode with a snow leopard. But before we jump to that, let me change the subject for just a minute. You might have seen some changes, some visual changes to my channel and to this video. I mean, there was a new intro to the video, there is a new logo of the channel. And this is all because the channel reached 5000 subscribers. And oh my god, I still cannot believe it. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for subscribing, for continuous support, for all your comments, uh, for waiting for new videos, for being active here on the channel. Thank you guys, this really means the world to me. I never thought like over a year ago when I started this channel that we will even ever get there like to 5000. This is just... Uh, this is actually a lot for me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I am beyond grateful. I am beyond happy. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. And yeah, I decided a while ago that I want to change uh, the visual aspect of my channel a bit. Actually, I've been thinking about it since like half a year uh, and, you know, trying different designs, trying different things. Uh, but ultimately, I decided to stick to something very similar like improved version of the things that we already had uh, this is because I really enjoyed the like previous designs I did them themselves I did the logo myself I did the intro myself and so on but I thought that I could do better I could have better designs and uh, it was time to actually go and change it uh, so the logo was made by me uh, I decided to go for a mi more minimalistic one the bigger giraffe so you guys know that it is the giraffe from the you know small uh, version of a logo that appears next to my videos my original logo and all the designs included the giraffe and I knew that the giraffe is there to stay I didn't want to change it at all so I still wanted to include the giraffe but I wanted to make the logo more minimalistic I didn't need my name in the logo as the previous design it had my name uh, you know the name is always displayed next to the, my video so there's no sense of having it in a logo uh, and yeah, I really like this mi more minimalistic uh, design of the logo. When it comes to the intro, uh, I kind of liked the, f the previous one, but still I wanted to something more elevated. Uh, and I collaborated on the logo with someone else. I don't have the skills to do something else, something like that. I'm not a graphic designer, like at all. <laughs> so uh, I had, uh, I found a guy on a Fever. It's an app uh, where you can like uh, order such things like logos and I don't know uh, intros and stuff like that. And I found this guy. Uh, who I really liked his works. I knew what I wanted to have, and uh, the collaboration was just amazing. So if you are watching and you want like <laughs> an animation made for you, definitely go and check. Uh, the user named Aero Professionals because he is very professional and he does wonderful stuff. Uh, so uh, if by any means you need a custom animation, go and check this guy out. So I did a logo and a banner, new banner for the channel. He did the animation for an intro and that's how all the new designs were born. I really love them. I think it's so cohesive now and the things basically that I wanted from the very beginning, but I didn't have like a means to do them. Uh, so I did it all myself. Uh, 
also uh, the color of all of my designs, I mean logo and so on, changed a bit because the previous green was the exact same one that Planet Zoo uses. <laughs> that is like its uh, signature color, so it wasn't too wise to use that. I don't know why they did it. I just thought that it would be like my channel would be easier associated with the game, but you know, I need to have my own color. I don't need to rely on someone else's basically. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy our new designs for the channel, our new visuals. This is still me, this is still Caesar Creates, so don't get me confused with no one else. Uh, this is still a, your giraffe guy with a giraffe in the logo, but just looking a bit more improved and elevated. And I hope that because of that my whole channel will get a bit more elevated, so let's hope for that and thank you guys again for your continuous support. You are just the best! <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy about those 5000. Like, for someone it might seem like not too much, but for me it is actually a huge amount of subscribers and I think that I actually like made it on YouTube right now. That's, I have like a group of people who want to watch me and it is not a small group anymore, it is like a big group basically. So thank you guys again and yeah, this is so amazing. Thank you, thank you and thank you. I told you that I want to take a minute to talk about it and it took me about six, <laughs> so sorry about that. I always talk too much uh, when it comes to stuff like that. So let me tell you now what is the plan for today's video, what we will build, what we have already built while I was talking for our lovely snow leopards that we are adding today to our zoo. First of all, today's video is a continuation of the previous video that we, where we started to build the uh, wildcat house. We've built like the whole front, the entrance to the house with the backstage areas for the stuff. So in case you haven't seen that video, go and check it out. I will put the link down in the description and on the screen. Uh, for you uh, because you probably want to see it if you haven't seen it uh, because it will make a lot more sense uh, what we are doing today. Uh, today as I told you guys we are adding the first big cut to that house. We'll add nine in total. Uh, so this video today it was actually a lot of work because I knew that this habitat would uh, like somehow set the whole tone for the whole house. Uh, like uh, what I will do here will continue throughout like the theming and stuff like that. The fences, the indoor area, it will like continue throughout the whole house. So I wanted to nail it for the first time, not to go back and change anything in this habitat. So. Yeah, no pressure at all. <laughs> it was actually a lot of pressure, so I started some things over and over again. That's why you had to wait a bit for this video, so sorry for that. But, you know, I wanted to make it, uh, like, good from the very beginning, as I told you guys. And I am very, very happy with how this habitat has turned out. The biggest issues that I had with this habitat was, first of all, its size, because at first I did it way too large and you know the uh, snow leopards aren't the biggest of uh, the wild cats. I would say that they are rather small so uh, you know the size had to be like comparable to their size, I mean the size of the habitat. Uh, so that was the first issue. The second one was that I didn't have like a clear inspiration for it uh, because uh, I didn't have too many pictures of the outside habitats from the Alfred Brem house, which is like the inspiration behind this building. Uh, it is a building in the Tier Park in Berlin and we are like, uh, you know, being inspired by it, building uh, something very similar, but there are no too many, there are not too many you know pictures of uh, those habitats after they were renovated uh, so I had to come up with something uh, myself I first of all thought about making like a very city zoo very concrete habitat that you sometimes see in those older zoos but it didn't like quite 
convince me so uh, then I did a second attempt and this was this thing that you see right now uh, the only thing that I saw uh, on the pictures of the renovated uh, like uh, real life building was that in all of those habitat there are uh, habitats there are a lot of bamboo uh, plants uh, so I also wanted to give them some uh, however the bamboo plant has one issue uh, it like limits the traversable area of the animals really really severely around it so you need to be careful with that not to destroy all of your habitat because I had some issues with uh, that uh, when it comes to the traversable area of the snow leopards it's not too well and this is quite common for the animals from the base game I feel like the newer animals they are really really good when it comes to the traversable area and the older ones uh, you know this is quite hard for them to navigate between like small rocks and some plants and so on so I definitely had to do some adjusting in this habitat after uh, the snow leopards were brought in there. So as you can see I am nearly done uh, closing that outside part of the habitat off. Uh, we already did a moat uh, with a really nice like city zoo fence uh, like uh, around it for the guests. Uh, also uh, we did like uh, concrete walls uh, like I came up with this idea to put like a column on the like on the top of the wall so it creates like this curved shape and it looks really really cool. Uh, and I also incorporated a lot of fake rocks into the wall. Uh, I saw one of Leaf's uh, video and he really inspired me to play a bit with those, you know, uh, longer rocks, like to keep put them uh, in one pile in s different, you know, uh, angles and they create those really like uh, interesting shapes like fake mountains like something like that and re yeah I really love it when it comes to leaf uh, he actually made a, a habitat for chimpanzees in his uh, riverbend discovery center that was inspired by my chimpanzee habitats from the desert adventure park so this is so so cool uh, thank you so much leaf it really means the world that you liked my uh, habitat so much if you you are watching it thank you and he also used uh, the my dead uh, climbable trees uh, that I uploaded to the workshop recently and that I will be using in this habitat as well uh, so if you want to download them and use them in your zoos you can because they are in the workshop and I will put the link down in the description for you to download them if you want to use them uh, I know that some people have some issues with them I mean that they are not climbable uh, for me for example in this habitat Habitat, it shows that they are climbable but the snow leopards are not using it, them at all so this is weird so please keep that in mind uh, please don't give it one star because of it I know that it is happening and sometimes it's so frustrating when you guys ask me to you know add something to the workshop I do and it gets like so many negative comments that something isn't working and so on so yeah that's why i'm not too hesitant of uploading things to uh, the workshop because they simply work well in my zoos and sometimes there is just a reason that they are not working in yours <laughs> uh, and when at, when this happens some people get really angry and they go back to the blueprint they give it one star and they like add a very angry comment. Uh, okay, I get it. When it doesn't work in your zoo, you get so you can get upset, but. I kind of don't build those habitats with a thought in my mind that I will be uploading them and I want to I uh, need to do them usable for you to use in your zoos if it, that makes any sense uh, so that's why sometimes they probably don't work well uh, and yeah sorry that's how it is basically so the snow leopards are great jumpers they can jump really really high so I had to uh, like uh, add some overhang uh, on the walls uh, I had to add you know some let's imagine that there is like a hot wire or something like that to prevent them from escaping uh, 
at first, uh, as you saw, those rocks were the f fake rocks were like higher than the fence, and I really loved how it was looking. But adding like uh, a hot wire or something like that around it looked really, really not good. So I decided to lower them, them down, and it still looks really, really nice. So uh, I am very happy with how those walls are looking. What I also used here was like this custom wall, uh, like brick or a tile I'm not really sure but the stone wall that we created for the moose uh, the original uh, like building it has like those very dark walls uh, where in the places where the habitats are so I obviously also wanted to do it uh, but the issue was that I didn't like all the default you know uh, walls that we have in game their textures or the colors so I had to use something of my own and I remember that we created this wall for the moose uh, so I wanted to use it once more I just changed the colors uh, of the wall. It is made from the temple pieces uh, from the South uh, America pack and in case you want to uh, you know see how I did this wall for the first time you can go and watch my moose habitat from this zoo. So on this wall we also did like an entrance for the snow leopards inside the uh, to the inside part of the habitat and then we also add uh, those rocks uh, and also we'll add very cool plants like those creeping plants made out of the Brazil nut sapling. Uh, I am recently obsessed with this tree. I'm using it all of the time and it also looks so so great and as those you know vines and uh, creeping plants behind like between the rocks. Yeah, I'm really really happy with how it is looking in here. I also kind of forgot to add like a hot wire or an overhang over this wall uh, so you won't be seeing it in the uh, speed build but uh, I will actually add them after so in the cinematic shots there there will be some you know protection uh, for the animals not to escape from this habitat. Uh, after that I added my uh, trees. I really love them. I really think that they match so well with the fake rocks, like the colors look so good together. And after that, I will go on and add a lot of rocks as always to all of my habitats. Uh, so I thought that, you know, rocks in here were like especially needed as we are building for snow leopards that live uh, in mountains uh, of Asia. So yeah, this was really important to use uh, like, you know, different elevations and stuff like that for them to feel like at home uh, to make them habitats look very natural. Also, I probably forgot to tell you guys something about the moat. Uh, the moat is here, like, of course, to protect the animals from escaping. It also gives the guests, like, this perfect view inside of the habitats. I use it all of the time because, uh, you know, the guests can simply see the animals like without uh, the the mesh or the cage like between them and animals so it is so cool to use stuff like that uh, the moat is quite wide because we, it, we need to have be sure that you know the animal won't be able to jump over it uh, and also I lined it with uh, matte pieces that as, as I always do. I love the texture of the matte walls uh, because it's not too regular and stuff. So it, it's perfect for molds and uh, stuff like that. Uh, so I obviously skipped it because it is just copying over, you know, uh, the same piece over and over again. It's such a, you know, boring <laughs> and repetitive thing, but uh, the finished result, I think it's worth it because I love a good moat and I love uh, how they look in those city zoos. So I knew that I wanted to do it and probably in most of the habitats here, uh, I mean in their outside parts will have moats. So uh, this was another thing that I needed to nail uh, because it will continue throughout almost the entire house. After adding rocks, I will add uh, bigger plants like bamboo and some pines. Uh, I thought it would be cool to use a lot of bamboo, first of all, because the original building has a lot of it around. Uh, but also the bamboo uh, isn't 
sort of tropical plant that can grow in Europe without any problem. Uh, there are some, uh, you know, species of bamboo that grow in Himalayan mountains and stuff like that. So uh, they are okay with uh, European winters. They can withstand the temperature up to mm, minus 20 degrees Celsius. So uh, perfect plants to use here in our zoo to bring a bit of this you know more tropical feeling to uh, the temperate zoo uh, so yeah I wanted to use the bamboos for sure uh, and also I added some pines because I thought that you know as a mountain uh, animal the snow leopards would uh, appreciate a good pine <laughs> because I associate pines with uh, you know, growing in mountains. I don't know why, but I always when I do, you know, habitats for uh, mountain animals, I use a lot of pines. After that, I will continue to add tons and tons of small rocks to this habitat and the small rocks was actually something that made it all look so so good and so natural just like a you know like a part of the mountain in Asia was brought into our zoo uh, yeah I love how uh, you know the rocks help tie everything together uh, we are using three different kinds. We are using the uh, aquatic rocks, uh, the small and big ones. We are using like the pile of rocks that I created for the beaver habitat and they, that I am using all of the time from, uh, from you know, creating them for the first time. And then I am using this pile of rock that I created from those new small aquatic rocks, like fake rocks uh, that were added with the Euro pack. And this is my favorite pile of rocks and I use it all the time as well and you know adding tons of them actually made this habitat look so exceptional and I think that without all those small rocks I wouldn't love this habitat as much as I do. After small rocks it was time to add all of the smaller plants to the habitat. Uh, in here I knew that I wanted to add a lot of this uh, drain grass, taller grass, because it is so common to add, you know, taller grass for big cats because they kind of like to hide in the grass, to sleep in it. Uh, so yeah, and this is not a herbivore, so we were able to go crazy with the plants. And I think that, you know, those more shy animals, they, uh, they feel just simply better in a very, like, heavily planted, dense habitats. So that's why I wanted to add a lot of those uh, grasses. And I think that in the end, it looks so, so, so cool. Uh, yeah, I love like the contrast of all this grass, the rocks with the snow leopards in it. It's so, so beautiful and you will be able to see it, of course, all in the cinematics by the end of this video. So while I am adding all of those plants to the habitat, I see that there are still two topics that are here on my list uh, and I would like to talk with you about them. So first, uh, thank you guys for enjoying the first part of the Wild Cut House so much. I didn't expect it to be such a well-performing video and uh, that I will have so many nice comments. So many of you actually uh, commented that uh, this building like... Uh, reminds you of your for example high school or the university that you were attending so yeah this is so cool because i think that uh, i was able to nail this style of the building if you are thinking in that way so thank you guys uh, thank you so much yeah the response on that video was just amazing so i am super super grateful the other thing was that uh, you guys were able to see at the beginning and in some like quick shots uh, the general shape of the entire building that I did using only the plaster pieces. Uh, this was made like before recording this video and it took me so so long because I wanted you know to 
like get a general idea of how big this building should be i measured everything i uh, you know uh, printed out even like a plan of the original building to uh, help me with the measurements how like uh, wide and you know long it should be uh, so I had to do some measurements and you know add corridors already add like a um, outside walls of it and uh, as you could see they were they are curved basically all the walls of this house are curved and this was quite a challenge because the curves are really really huge and to do that i had to do like those huge <laughs> circles uh using the matte peeler technique the circles were like in the size of the half of the map i think uh so yeah they were huge and i had to you know obviously delete a lot of those pieces so only like the uh like the parts of the circle state uh, and yeah this was actually a lot of work uh, so uh and i'm really happy that i was able to do it so right now we have like a general shape i know which lines to follow where the uh, habitats should be like positioned and so on so yeah this was really really helpful for me while i was talking about it you could see me uh doing for example the thing like a bit of adjustment with the barrier around the moat uh i decided to open up open it up a bit uh because i felt like the fence or the barrier was really like heavy with all of those concrete pieces uh the, those are actually the lime pieces i should say uh, so I decided to lower uh, like those walls into different sections uh, and you know use this uh, iron uh, fence and what a huge change actually it made it look not like very heavy as it was uh, earlier and also it's uh, it will be helpful for small uh, kids to see what's inside of the habitat so yeah i think that it is such a like very needed detail that i didn't think about it about like earlier so uh yeah i really like the like this idea after that i also added some detailing to the mode i mean the no new decals uh in and some moss pieces and I really love how the mode is looking now. Uh, so much more like realistic, generic with, because you know, it won't be so perfect with the water, uh, with the algae and uh, with some dirt that is coming down from this, you know, whole habitat. So yeah, right now it is looking just perfect. And after that, I will focus on building the skylights uh, for the whole uh, indoor section. This was definitely inspired by a real life uh, building. Uh, the intersections in those in this building, they all have those skylights that you know provide a lot of lights inside of them. Uh, so this was cool because I knew that I will need a lot of lights uh, with all those you know roofs and stuff like that. Uh, so I definitely wanted to include that. Uh, they are quite huge. Uh, there will be two of them uh, in this habitat. I actually made them bigger for at first and then I made them a bit smaller. And right now I think that their size is just perfect for this building. So after that, I went on to do the intersection of the habitat. And this was something that made me really exciting because intersections in that house in Berlin are so, so beautiful uh, that, uh, yeah, I was really inspired by them. I wanted to do something similar. Uh, so I couldn't wait to start creating uh, something inside of that. Uh, and of course, the thing with Planet Zoo is that you have to, uh, keep in mind the traversable area of the animals uh, so that those things cannot be too small because the animals simply won't be able to use it uh, in the like uh, you know uh, original building the indoor sections are a bit or not bad but <laughs> a lot smaller but on the other hand I think that it looks cool that they are so big 
uh, in my uh, case because for example when uh, the snow leopards like it cold <laughs> I mean they prefer colder climates so if we have very warm summer they will be able to use only like the indoor section of this habitat and I think that it will be like perfect for them and they don't need the uh, you know the outdoor section because the size of it is just perfect for them and then the same thing applies to the more tropical cats that I will add uh, during the winter for example when it will be too cold for them to go outside they will have their inside uh, section where they can stay warm uh, so having a bit of bigger ones like make makes sense uh, I surrounded the whole walls of the intersection with uh, the fake rocks uh, this is something that I taken from the original building all the you know walls inside of those uh, indoor habitats they're made of those fake rocks and I really loved it so I used the rock formations here that I already created for the outside part and also some of new ones because uh, on the uh, on the side where the backstage uh, area for them will be uh, I didn't want to make those walls too um, thick because they were like they were taking the space of uh, the backstage area way too much so I decided to make a bit of a different wall but in the end you cannot really like notice that uh, there is something different about it uh, so yeah in the inside part there will be a lot of rocks a lot of logs uh, because I really loved how they incorporated a lot of dead trees and logs inside of those habitats in the real life building uh, and also some plants because I still wanted to have like real plants in there uh, but not, obviously not too many this is an indoor section and you know uh, keeping plants alive in those are often hard uh, so uh, there will be only some uh, I still wanted to keep it in this like mountainy biome type of thing uh, because this is also the thing that I forgot to tell you uh, we will like uh, have the cats in this house uh, like located more uh, based on the biome that they are coming from so we are starting from this you know taiga uh, temperate kind of biome and we'll be moving through the biomes to the more uh, you know tropical one uh, so you can kind of figure out which uh, animals will be adding in future videos uh, we started with a, a cat that likes very cold climates uh, it likes mountains and will continue from now on uh, to make it kind of make sense <laughs> inside of this house and I hope you guys will enjoy the like order of the cats that will be added in here so as you could see, I didn't add any of the food enrichment in the outside part of the habitat because the keepers won't be able to go in there. Uh, we'll have all the food trays and food enrichment in the inside part. Uh, I still like added like an implemented doors uh, to the outside parts and for the sake of realism, but they are not obviously usable for the uh, for the gas for the not gas the guests don't want to go in there uh, but for the stuff I still ask and wait for like multiple gates to the habitats uh, this would be such a great feature for stuff like that because uh, it is not too realistic to do those you know uh, doors for the animals uh, like co that connect to different sections like in the height of the human where they are when they are so little and they can you know fit through smaller doors and and because of that the staff cannot go outside but uh, we were able to you know omit that with you know uh, adding all of the food things inside uh, the indoor section we are slowly heading towards the end of this video and I still haven't shared with you guys any of the fun facts about the uh, snow leopards and they are such an interesting animal that I definitely want to tell you guys something about them. 
So the snow leopard has large nasal openings which allow for increasing the volume of air inhaled with each breath. It helps with warming and humidifying the cold dry air and it also has some different adaptations for living in the cold mountains environment. It has small rounded ears that help, uh, help it to minimize the heat loss. Its broad paws uh, let distribute the body weight walking on the snow and have four on their undersides to increase the grip on steep and unstable surfaces. Uh, the long and flexible tail helps them to maintain balance in the rocky terrain. The tail is very thick due to fat storage and it's covered with thick layer of fur which allows the cat to use it like a blan blanket to protect its face while asleep. The snow leopard is native to countries like Nepal, Bhutan, uh, India, the Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, but also Russia and Mongolia. It obviously lives in very high mountains. Uh, it is a very shy and solitary animal, so not many people were lucky to see it uh, in the wild. And it's also because of their camouflage. Uh, the coloring of the uh, snow leopard is kind of, you know, white grayish. So it blends very well in this rocky terrain with a lot of uh, rocks, stones and snow. The snow leopard is listed as vulnerable uh, because the global population is uh, fewer than 10,000 mature individuals. It is threatened by poaching and habitat destruction, but it is protected in most of the countries that it lives in. And if people try to hunt uh, for them, uh, they can be imprisoned uh, for up to seven years in those countries. So. I hope that it convinces those people not to do it. Okay, so we don't have any more time for any of the fun facts. I hope you guys have enjoyed the ones that I gave you. As you can see, uh, we are working on the barrier, the glass barrier for the intersection. I really liked the original uh, barrier from this house and I wanted to recreate that. It has like this uh, glass barrier uh, up to some height and then it is mesh uh, so it provides a good ventilation inside of this intersection and looks really really cool uh, so I hope you guys will like it. I actually won't include the footage of building the backstage uh, area for this habitat. I will show you guys uh, the final finished product uh, in the cinematic shots by the end of this video. Uh, this is the backstage area that we already done so many times that I am sure that you guys will be figure it out how I did it uh, if you watched my previous videos. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, uh, please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. This would really mean a world to me and would help me get even more subscribers. Thank you again for those 5000s, as I told you guys, it means a world to me. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up down below, uh, ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, and comment down below if you enjoyed this video, and let me know what you think about our new intro and logo and stuff like that. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys!